All right, guys, I had pretty good feedback on that uh, first roof inspection I did. And uh, a lot of people wanted me to take a look at a fifth wheel. So I have this uh, momentum. It just uh, arrived. I haven't seen anything about it, so we'll climb up and take a look at the roof. I'll find out the, uh, the year of this, and we'll get back with it. All right, so this isn't brand new. This is, let's see, two, made in 15, so it's likely a 16. So we'll call it about four years old, and we'll get on this roof. And we'll point that out. That's not an uncommon problem I've seen on all of these. Just a little bit of a flex point. But that's not a roof. We'll get on the roof. Looks like they might have hit the ladder on something. That's fine. That's fine. It still works. <coughs> all right. So I don't know anything about this roof at all. All right. So looking at it. This is going to be a rubber roof. It's hard to see it, but there's no texture on it, and it's very, very uh, pliable. So it's just going to be a rubber roof or EPDM. You can see this die This is die core stuff, lovely die core. This cracking. Um, again, I would just clean that off with uh, mineral spirits and reseal that. I don't see any obvious signs of uh, the molding being loose. All right, I was editing the video and I felt like maybe I didn't explain that part very well. So we're here on the roof, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. So of course right here, I said it's cracked a little bit. So I would just touch this up with Dicor over the top of it. But now di Dicor won't stick to dirt and it won't stick to wet surfaces. So if we just use soap and water, so there's just a cleaner. It cleans it up a little bit, but not very well. It still won't stick very well right there. But if we get some mineral spirits, if we just get some mineral spirits on a rag here, okay. I don't know if you guys see how well that cleans that off, because this die cork gets a little bit sticky in the heat, and dirt sticks to it really well, all right? Now that'll soften up the die core, and so the next, the new die core will stick to it pretty well. But you gotta wait for this stuff to, to dry off completely. Don't put die core on wet uh, mineral spirits, because that won't help. But more importantly, we need to keep it off of the actual rubber roof. Uh, mineral spirits, uh, petroleum products, can damage a rubber roof or a TPO roof. So try to minimize as much. Like, don't put that solvent soaked rag on the uh, rubber roof. You'll notice I have it on the can over there. And then, of course, at this point, we would just go ahead and. Uh, seal over the top of it so that's what i said when i, when I said use mineral spirits that's what we're going to do i am a little concerned that the factory never put a a cap molding on this rail here so this seam is uh directing water so if you put a a non-sagging sealant right here the water would then just go straight into the gutter I don't know why the factory neglected to do that. I mean, theoretically, it's sealed behind there. There's going to be sealant behind this molding, and the rubber itself is a good gasket, but it's a little disconcerting. I wouldn't have left it like that. And then this doesn't have a radius on it, so it's kind of hard to see. But I'm pushing it in. So that's just a hard edge right there. It's a little surprising they didn't at least round that edge. All right, so that was everything just right there. So on my last video, I talked about this plastic insert on awnings being, shrinking up. But what can happen also is that it uh, slides out the end of there. So that means it came out that side over there. This is not uncommon either. This thing whips around, hits that. The uh, obvious repair is just to cut it, but that means that the fabric's going to be loose on that side. But let's see... Yeah, I don't see evidence that they they sealed on this side either, on this cap. It's a bit strange to me. Alright, so this is a five-year-old rubber roof. Likely been in Arizona the entire time. 
and it's very serviceable. Everything looks fine there. I'll go up against the AC. I'll push it with my leg. Lift on it. It doesn't seem to be loose. This is another one of those those vents that we could probably poke our finger through. But it's intact, so we won't have to poke our finger through that one. Alright, so this is actually a Max fan uh, from the makers of uh, Max air vent covers. This is a specific one. Uh, this doesn't have the built-in rain shield. It's got these tabs right there that are designed only for their covers to be pinned on. It seems like a great idea, but this is what happens. The sealant gets in the way, and you can only use their cover. That's why I don't. I think it's kind of a bad thing to do to people. But nobody asked me. Uh, yeah, so I'd reseal that too. Okay. Go ahead and move this one. That one. This AC doesn't seem loose. These are uh, Dometic Brisk Airs. So these are the, the the lower tier. They're a little bit higher profile. Whereas on that roof, that's a Penguin. From Dometic. So this is a very wonky uh, roof edge right here. I'm really surprised the factory sh sent this thing like that. To be, that's pretty gross. I don't know if you see the, the white, that this white layer, because this is a rubber roof, it's designed to chalk. It's a zinc oxide, so that's why you always get the streaking down the sides of the RV. I don't see anything bad there. Uh, this yellow, actually, you can take the, the yellow off of this just with some uh, some solvent. It'll polish it off. But you don't really want to do that too much because you could risk cracking it because they do get brittle. So you can see, let's see right there. I don't know if you can see that moving a little bit. I'd like to uh, secure that. I'd probably drill a hole and put a screw in there at the very least. I mean, we can look through there so we can see that water's only getting to right about there. So you could put a lap seal on there, but the lap seal is just going to crack again, unless you keep that thing from moving. It's just strange, so they have a Max Air fan right here. I mean, uh, a fantastic vent. I'll assume this is the bathroom area. And a Max fan back there for the kitchen galley area. It's strange to mix and match like that. There's the TV antenna, everything looks fine there. This is the natural place for it to leak at that little boot. And they did a good job sealing under there, so even if water got in there, it wouldn't be uh, leaking more than likely. Normally, if it's going to leak, it's going to leak at the handle where it comes through here. Check this right here. That AC seems nice. So this front cap area right here, again, this cracking is just um, mostly cosmetic. It's nothing I would be too concerned about. I like to uh, take my foot and actually step on the roof and see if that molding moves. Other than that, you can see the, the clear. I don't know why the industry gets away with using such poor clear quality. So this thing's about five years old and it's lost all it's clear on the roof or most of it the clear coat on the on that fiberglass okay so other than that if you look down the side here this molding this is just a snap-on molding that goes over top of aluminum molding uh, you'd use a uh, clear silicone after you clean that all up to help redirect water again Again, that, that's just going to redirect water so that water's not trying to get under there. I will say there might be a little bit of movement right about... Yeah, I can see a little bit of movement on that molding. Sometimes they don't use long enough screws, and have you seen some of my videos? A lot of times the factory misses uh, structure for those uh, th that molding. Well, Alright, we're almost done with this inspection. We'll do one more pass and call it good.
And this is just uh, your wine guard satellite dish. Road trip. So you can make that either direct TV or dish network. Uh, I didn't point it out, but you can see this uh, fabric's quite sunburnt now. That should be a dark black, and you can kind of see how textury it is. It shouldn't be textury, it should be very smooth. So you want to look for the seams and make sure those aren't getting brittle. Alright, now, that's of course where it's going to be seamed. They really should have put a cap sealant on this. You use a non-sagging die core on this edge right there because if you put uh, self-leveling, when you put it there, it's just going to roll over the edge of that. And we do uh, the non-sag acrylic uh, or die core because silicone doesn't stick exceptionally well to rubber. And so you want to minimize the amount of silicone on the rubber. I just can't get over that. I mean... That's a hard corner right there. It seems strange to me that, I mean, those RV roof guys would have had, RV roof installs out of Georgia would be making fun of this roof quite a bit. All right, well guys, this roof's very serviceable. Could use some uh, retouch ups, but uh, it looks good. Uh, I know the common question on, on all these RV roofs for some reason is how often do I recoat it? How often do I paint it? Uh, that's not a, a, a standard maintenance that you're going to do on a rubber roof or RV roof in general. Uh, coating it, putting paint on it, doing any sort of co uh, coatings, that's a last ditch effort to extend the life of a, I wouldn't say expired, but de dead or dying uh, roof. You're not going to be doing that every year. This is not something you're going to do every year. Anyways, guys, hope that helps somebody. Uh, well, there it is, guys. A Momentum M-Class fifth wheel toy hauler. That's a big guy. These are usually pretty nice, uh, nice trailers. And there it is. That's a... Uh, that's the inspection. That's all one thing you really need to do at least once a year. And that'll save a lot of problems down the road. Uh, we'll take a look at a different style of roof next time. Thanks, guys.